Hey, Junior Adventurers, this is Drew with a special pre-game announcement from the A&D crew. Last session, we brought up the idea of A&D Con, and many of you were kind enough to come to our Facebook page to express interest and suggestions. Now, we want to take the next step forward. If we can hold it, A&D Con will, by necessity of our schedules, be on the weekend of September 20th, 2019. Events would include panels, game sessions run by the cast, a live show, and lots of other fun stuff we've got in the works. What we need from you right now is just to see how many folks are interested in attending, now that those details are locked down. For that purpose, as you listen to this, we'll have posted a poll on facebook.com slash authorsanddragons. If you have the time, please go on over and click it to let us know if this is an event you'd like to attend. We obviously aren't going to count these as rock-solid commitments, but it will let us know if there's enough interest at this stage to move on to the next one. Much as we want to throw a and Con, we also have to make sure there's enough attendance to make it fun for everyone. Ticket prices will come as more details are locked down, and while we can't offer a concrete number, our goal here is to make this happen, not make a profit. We'll keep the tickets as reasonably priced as we are able. Thank you all so much for listening, and please don't forget to go hit that poll at facebook.com slash authorsanddragons. That date is going to be absolutely essential in helping us figure out whether or not we can even step forward and try and put this together. So, Authors and Dragons Con, weekend of September 20th in Las Vegas. All right, with all that done, take it away, other Drew. Authors and Dragons! Time of magic, age of might. A band of heroes step up to the fight. Playing with powers they don't understand. Will they fuck it all up or will they save the land? Fantasy authors take on a sadistic games master. Will they survive? Sound the horns of idiocy. Others and dragons. Others and dragons. Good evening, everybody. I'm John Hartness, and I'll be playing the role of Fendingo the Fantastical. Glorious bard of all trades and master of baiting. In real life, I write the Quincy Harker Demon Hunter series as well as the Black Knight Chronicles, Bubba the Monster Hunter, the Dead Old Ladies Detective Agency, and, I don't know, whatever else I feel like. Go ahead, go out there, buy my shit. Hi, I'm Joseph Brassi. I play Bjorg Bjornsson, the enthusiastic and violent positive masculinity barbarian. I was an author on the Mongoliad. My novels Skyfarer and Dragon Road can be found online from Angry Robot Books and on Amazon and all those places. And I'm also the novel uh, author of the non-existent book idea Donnie and the Demon Dick Pick. Hi, I'm Rick Walteri, and I play Silas Kane, mighty paladin of a god I still can't fucking say. In real life, I write several things, but uh, probably the most important stuff is right now I have the latest Shingles book, which is Sense and Sensibility in Sasquatch, uh, a new take on an old classic. And by the time you're listening to this, you should be able to grab the pre-order for Strange Days, Bill of the Dead, book one, which is the sequel series for Tome of Bill. Hello, friends. My name is Robert Bevan. I play the role of Klaus Richter, the notorious rogue. Um, in real life, I write the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy, novels, and short stories, starting with the first book, Critical Failures. And I have a cold, so I'm suffering more than you are listening to me. Hi there, I'm Steve Weverell, and I play Brandon Fymaster, the monk as gorgeous as he is humble. In real life, I write some books. Go see if you can find them on the internet. Good evening, everyone. I am Drew Hayes, and I play the cackling, mad, sadistic dungeon master, because it's a character, not me, of course. <clears throat> In uh, real life, I write books such as the Super Powered series, the Spell, Swords, and Cell series, the latest of which, Siege Tactics, is available on audiobook now. And speaking of audiobook, I also wrote Secondhand Curses, which isn't especially new, but was recently nominated for the Best Fantasy category at the 2019 Audio Awards. So, uh, fingers crossed, I'm up against some really great competition, so probably won't take it home, but it is awesome to even get the nod. Woo! 
Yay. It's an honor just to be nominated, he says, before viciously shanking everyone backstage. And you get to come to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to go up to New York and uh, visit, and uh, I'm going to hang out with Rick for a bit, too. So it's going to be a fun trip. But we are on a different trip, a trip deep within the Gentronome facilities. And when last we left the party, they had returned to, like, the general kind of hub shopping chill-out area that you have, uh, you know, sort of uses your unofficial base. There's, there's definitely poop in at least one corner of this room. At so, least one. Did I do that? So deep. Just deep. Like balls deep. Really, everyone does that. Because you've okay. just you've been in this room for days, and we haven't talked about it, but you're shitting somewhere. Okay. That's the sh- that's the squat corner. I was going to say, yeah. for, our, for our listeners, if you're the type who likes who enjoys watching the Home Shopping Channel, this episode's for you. Because <laughs> <laughs> they never awesome. let those guys leave the Home Shopping Channel, so they have to shit in the corner, too. House Hunters, uh, Gentron- Gentronome Edition. So for ease of uh, keeping shit straight, we are going to go ahead and do a fresh round of initiative. Brandon Firemaster rolls a 21 for initiative. Silas Kane gets a 10. Fandingo rolls a 22. And he gets bonus points for doing it uh, in a way that auto-populates. <laughs> Oh, shit. For one. Yeah, to- um, totally fucked that oh, up. Oh, as does Klaus. Well oh, done. I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> what was the other way? The way where you don't click your token and hit initiative. Oh. Uh, uh, Bjorg rolls right. a seven, so he's distracted. Our Klaus rolled an eleven, which sucks for Klaus. Okay, everybody who didn't get the uh, the gold star like Bevan, I'm adding your turns. Go ahead and just punch in your initiative. That was completely accidental. I clicked my token to look at my hit points. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a win's a win, man. <laughs> oh, hey, I, I once got like a commendation at work because uh, they had some stupid safety thing going on. I was going downstairs and I heard like the safety. I, I knew the safety officer's voice and he was coming up and I just didn't want to hear shit from him. So I, so I grabbed the banister and walked downstairs. And s- the next, the next hour, I'm like brought in front as like a as like this bastion of safety to like the uh, the company. <laughs> How low was the bar that <laughs> holding the railing was commendable? Let me tell, let me tell you, if, 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 if this company could have mandated everybody wear bubble wrap, they would have. Now, in the company's defense, I've seen Bevan go up an escalator. <laughs> Nobody saw that except for the Security hotel camera. employee. <laughs> and Jesus. <laughs> All right, well, Fandingo, appropriately enough, you have the first turn, seeing as you also have the shopping key. That sort of uh, sort of works out nicely. Yeah. Do any of us remember which thingy went to which? Just turn We've them got... all on. <laughs> yeah. What did the one in the center uh-huh. do? Okay, <clears throat> so Compass Rose, where the big one means north. Uh, speaking of, the big one in the center is the one that none of you have been able to access yet. You have not had enough gems. All right, so to the uh, to the northeast is the one that you get your food, water, basic sustainable stuff from. Uh, to the direct east is the one you get baseline adventuring gear. Um, this would be where you would get some rope, for example, Woo. seeing as that came up <laughs> recently. You know, I had that written down. <laughs> yeah, that one, essentially, you can just interact with it. You can buy all the basic stuff out of the Adventurer's Guide. Southeast is uh, the general components one. Um, so you're probably not going to interact with this one in-game much, but it's sort of there to explain if you're buying arcane components for any of your spells and whatnot, or crafting stuff, if you were to go down that road. Okay, to the northwest... Uh, is the weapon. That one's pretty straightforward, basic weapons. To the direct west is the armor one. Uh, Again, pretty straightforward, just armor. Uh, And then down here is the potions one um, that you have been slowly... You had a baseline amount of access, and then you got better... Or no, you had no access originally, and then you got some access last time, but there are still things that you were not yet able to access. And as you all... (laughs) Uh, walk in. We're going to say you catch the end light of a, of a teleportation beam going up. Those do still occur hourly should you ever decide to exit the Gentronome dungeon. 
Um, you hear the familiar voice come over the system. All please take a break for the Gentronome Company Anthem. <laughs> Gentronome, 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 Gentronome. Thank you. The break has been deducted from your time. <laughs> and, it, and it took Drew two weeks to write that. <laughs> Brings a tear to the eye. Yeah, that's what it does. Fandingo, <laughs> after that symphony, if you can compose yourself long enough. Yeah, Fandingo will go to the big the big rod in the center of the room and hold his key up to it. Okay, this time when you touch it, you have three gems lit and the screen activates and it displays... Da, 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 uh, a small amount of magical item availability. Mm. Mm, I know. Mm. What does it say? From this terminal, you can buy a plus one version of any um, weapon or armor basic. Like, you couldn't oh. get like a plus one mithril shield, but you could buy a plus one buckler or a plus one shield. Um, so nothing custom, but the the core basics. That is what you have unlocked with that level of gem. So if anybody at this at this level, you should all kind of have that. So if anybody needs to go bump up their weapon, this is definitely the place to do it. Our arm, armor um, could be useful. Armor is also in there. Yeah, my armor is better than that already. Oh, um, the price is 5,000 um, gold or gentronome bucks. Anything. Oh. Any right. any of the... Basically, take the basic item cost and then add 5,000 for the plus oh. one. Oh, okay, never mind. I, I already have a plus two breastplate. I don't have magical shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, d you guys have all spent your gold and energies differently, but I uh, figured this is a good time to make sure everybody's at least rocking a baseline magic weapon at seventh level. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one plus one arrow. I have my plus two greatsword and I have my plus two breastplate. God, it would be such a dick move if I made this thing not accept Gentronome box. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would. We are grateful that it that, that I just is not the case. Loop that turns into a plus one longsword. <laughs> it's such a Disney move. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the gentleman bucks are only for the lesser stations. <laughs> this, this is the big money. This is the prime currency, baby. Yeah, I don't think I need anything out of here. Oh, no. But that's All right. well, that probably was... my action to... Uh... Yeah, to mm. activate it. Um, if you want to let them know, they can yeah. come over and do a purchase if they would so like. Oh, you know, I will buy a... I have these ten crossbow bolts that'll just return to me. I should probably get a plus one crossbow. Sensible thing. Yeah, I'll get a hand uh, crossbow. Uh, just grab hand crossbow from the uh, player's handbook cost, add 5,000, and deduct it from either your gold or your gentronome bucks, as appropriate. Not a problem. Mm. Brandon Thighmaster. How much were the healing potions again? That seems like pertinent. I believe they were 50 gold or gentronome bucks. Oh, fuck yeah, I'm getting some healing potions. 50, wow. Do you remember okay. they expire after uh, three days? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we're... Oh, no, no, they're they're very pertinent to have. I'm just saying, like, don't go too ham on them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to grab three more of those. Uh, well, grab... we can't do potions right now because John's oh, okay. the only one with the shopping key, and he is at the gotcha. magic terminal. Check. So, okay. Brandon Thighmaster. All I need is potions. I don't really need magical armor or weapons, because I functionally am both of those things. So, uh... You're a magic man with magic hands. I'm just Yeah, exactly. I'm just gonna hang around the potions uh, terminal with an expectant look at myself. Like when you're at the self-checkout kiosk, and you've, like, put a beer through, and so now it's like, oh, well, approval needed, and you gotta just yeah. kinda hang out and wait for the attendant. You, you wanna make eye contact, but you don't, because that feels like it's aggressive, but you're like, I, I need you, but that, is that, is this the energy? Quietly sort of muttering to yourself about, you know, what the fuck is the point of this thing? Why can't they just have, like, normal people tell us again? 
So yeah, I'll just do a, a long litany of angry rights about what bagging area, what the fuck are you talking about? While I wait for my uh, wait for Fandingo to assist with my potion selection. The item is in the fucking bag. Quit yelling at me <laughs> and saying it's not in the fucking bag. It's in the bag. I took a bullet for this country. <laughs> I took a bullet in the ass. Goddamn robot revolution. All I'm going to be getting here is, I guess, about five potions. Well, uh, you might want to wait and uh, see, because remember, you don't know all the potions that are available yet. Ah, some more ones uh, might have been available. All right, Klaus. All right, I will go hang out with Fandingo here. And I would like to upgrade to a plus one set of studded leather armor. Not a bad idea. And for that, I will remove uh, 5,045 ginger gnome bucks. And now, if I wanted a, um, like a plus one longbow, does the, the plus one apply to uh, attack and damage? Yes. And okay. it will apply to every arrow you shoot from it. You don't have to whack somebody with the bow for it to count. I, I assumed that. <laughs> um, now, I had another question. All right. Do what's, Do I need to, like, I forget how this works. Do I need a proficiency with the longbow, or is that a, how does that work? Uh, yes, you would need to be proficient with the longbow to get your proficiency bonus with the longbow. So the, your, your proficiency bonus, uh, I believe, for what, 7th level, is it 2 or is it 3? Three? 3. Yeah. So basically, if you were to try and use a weapon you don't have proficiency with, you wouldn't get that plus 3. Ah. You'd only get your dex. And how do you get a proficiency bonus? Uh, well, you would have to have proficiency with that weapon. <laughs> I, I understand. Is that something you can acquire at a later level? Or? I believe there's probably a feat for it. Um, yeah, it'll be a but feat. hang on, is a is a longbow a complex I'm, weapon? I don't. know. I'm a sharpshooter. Let me check out what that feat actually. You're also a half elf. Like. Don't you start off with longbow for being a half elf? I don't know. Sharp, sharpshooter basically attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage. Um, you ignore certain types of cover. You basically ignore all cover, except for total. And then you can do that thing where you take a negative five like, to, to hit. Oh, but yeah, you that can was do, fun. I haven't, yeah. Well, I haven't really been shooting at anything lately. Um, and no, you don't get shit for being a half-elf. Okay. Um, but you get simple weapons. So you could take a short bow. Right, and I currently have a short bow, which I probably haven't been adding a proficiency bonus to. Um, <laughs> no, you've been hitting it fairly well, I think. Yeah, but all right. Um, you only get that on to hit, not to damage. Right. Okay. Um. Well, I guess I'll stick with what's working for me. I'll um. Is your short bow plus one? You could bump that up. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'll bump that up. Okay. All right. So I'll F I'll five thousand twenty-five gold or gentronome bucks. Okay. Um. I think that's all I'm gonna be doing at this kiosk. Silas. All right, well, I'm going to do similar. So I'm going to join them in uh, plus uh, plus one uh, studded leather as well. <laughs> Except, you know, maybe, maybe maybe spend the rest of my turn trying to carve, like, you know, the uh, the Touareg symbol in the front. Your commerce feeds our capitalism. Thank you for shopping Gentronome. How am I the only one who sprang for studded leather back on the island with Gunther? Because I, I spent as much money as I could on plus two studded leather. Yeah, you, prob you probably spent some of my money, too. <laughs> oh, that's right, I did. I spent a lot of your money on my yeah, plus you did. two armor. Yeah, that's, that's why you have such good armor. <laughs> right, I appreciate right. the shit out of that, Silas. My gold was depleted by a, by a, uh, by the breastplate purchase as well. All right. Uh, well, speaking of Bjorg, you've got yeah. some gentronome bucks to burn and a weapon slash armor kiosk. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I've got. He's got his plus two great sword. So there's it's, can't do better than that. His plus two plus two breastplate is pretty good. But I'm thinking he do might. Do you have any want... kind of ranged options? Uh, I don't. I, he has a spear. He just has a spear. So uh, you can get a light crossbow. That's a simple range. I'm guessing you're probably. Every, basically, everybody's good with proficient with simple. I think I'm proficient with all martial weapons, but let me look. Oh shit! Yeah, you are. Yeah. Oh I have, man! Like, I have all I have all martial weapons, so I could grab some. I was thinking old school barbarians. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, fuck I'm, yeah, buddy. Okay, so let's see here. 
Let's uh, up my up my kill capacity. You don't right. fuck with a shield, do you? Uh, no, I don't have a shield because again, two-handed, big two-handed sword. So yeah, so if you're switching over to shooting, you could probably go heavy crossbow because there's not really a situation where you're gonna have a sword in one hand and a crossbow in the other. No, no, there's not because it's again, it's a big two-handed weapon. I'm just grabbing that like, Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for a heavy crossbow. Let me just find the damn stats for it. Heavy crossbow is 50. So, and how much do we add, add to that? 5,000. 5,000. Okay, let me just do some lightning quick math here. Make sure I'm In gold track. or gentronome bucks. Uh, I do not have 5,000 gold. But we each ended up with 12,000 gentronome bucks. Holy shit, I didn't note my money on my sheet. I just have the gentronome bucks listed. That's <laughs> irritating. You, pr you probably gave it to, to Fandingo as well. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, you all there. just got 10,000 Gentronome bucks, so there is money to burn. Yeah, 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 no, I meant when we get out of here. I yeah, the Gentronome bucks will be less useful outside of this facility. Because he's been pretty light on his spending. Well, the plus two breastplate probably just cleaned you out, honestly. Yeah, that did, is, but That's a huge purchase at that early right. in the game. It was worth it, though. It's kept me alive. Which oh, 100% turn, for a tank. It was money well spent. Yeah, it lets uh, me throw fireballs right at you. <laughs> the AC doesn't really protect me from that, Bendigo. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> but it makes you a lot easier to see because you're shinier. All right, so down to 7,200 gentronome bucks, and I now have a plus one heavy crossbow, which means I can kill things from a distance if I need to. If the barbarians go in range, you know shit's gone sideways. Or just like if we're ever in a, you know, if we're ever in a situation where our enemies are across a huge chasm, I can shoot at them with everyone else. And yeah. Just impotently going, rah! Lazy ass bastard. All right, Fandango. If everybody's done shopping at this thing, I'll go over to the potion kiosk. <gasps> it ripples, the, the screen lights up, uh... It recognizes that you have money to spend and it is eager to assist you in that endeavor. As before, you see your two gemstone unlocked options for 50 gold apiece. Potions of healing, potions of climbing, and potions of water breathing. You now see more light up uh, as new options appear. Two, in fact, potions of acid resistance and potions of dark vision. They are both 500 gold per vial. And there are still some uh, like areas in the list that are blacked out. So potion of being as cool as Fandingo, because I, I already have dark vision. Are you, are you a half-elf? Yeah. Okay, then I do too. I was just looking that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's actually, it actually occurred to me that if we're going to go fight this Aboleth at some point, and it's in the dark, Bjorn can't fucking see. So tank and DPS must be able to see. Fandingo is going to get two potions of climbing, two potions of water breathing, and seven potions of healing. Okay. So let's see. That's what? 350 for the healing, 100 for the other, 100 for the climbing, 100 for the water breathing. So 550. Yep. In Gentronome Bucks or... <laughs> Gentronome Bucks, baby. Okay. Brandon Thighmaster. I'm going to be a careful man and buy that potion of acid resistance. <laughs> I'm also going to buy the uh, potion of dark vision so I can see the inevitable acid splashing into my face. Uh, and as well as that, I'm going to get four healing potions and another potion of climbing because that turned out to be pretty useful. All right, so what, that's 1,000 for the first two. Uh, you said four healing potions, so that's 200. And then one climbing or one water breathing? Climbing, I already have ah. a water breathing. Gotcha. All right. That doesn't matter, it's 250. So what, that's uh, 1,250. 1,250, I'll stick another healing potion on then, round it up. Why not? Even 1,300. Cool. I've also deducted a gold for um, rations. Just put that out there for an extra bit of flavor for the listener. <laughs> a gold or a gentronome buck? Uh, I just use a solid gold, but... <gasps> oh, real money. You are a big spender. Yeah, I had an extra gold that was, you know, it was an odd number, so... Klaus! 
The potion kiosk is open. I will remind you, they do not sell ale there. That's fine. I could use some healing potions. I will get ten. <laughs> <laughs> Most of those I'm going to use now. <laughs> just, just buying them and cracking them yeah. up. <laughs> He's just, Klaus is just chugging. This is the equivalent of buying a case of beer and then walking outside of the 7-Eleven, setting it down, <laughs> leaning against the wall, and just cracking in. He's using this like a, like a coffee machine. He's like, yeah, making a double. <laughs> okay, so that's 10 healing, 2 climbing, 2 water, 2 acid. Oh, God. So I, You know the prices. Just do the math. Yeah, All right, hang on. Shame on me. I'm using a calculator. Go for it. Everything but the acid and dark vision is 50. The acid and dark vision is 500. Oh. You know what? Yeah. Fuck acid. I don't need that shit. <laughs> acid resistance is for losers. Yeah, kids, don't do drugs. <laughs> okay. Uh, or wait, don't resist doing acid, I guess? Yeah. Is that the map? Yeah, moral? kids, do do drugs. <laughs> yeah. So that's 700 total. Ginger gnome bucks. Big spender. And um, I guess I can wait for my next turn, but I'll... Or is it okay if I just suck down some potions right now? Uh, just go ahead and do the rolling. We, we can see it. It's it's all right. All right. What's what's the roll? Uh, for the gentleman potions, it is one d eight plus one. All right. All right. I will wander over to the potion kiosk, and uh, my shopping list will be two potions of dark vision, two potions of acid resistance, two potions of healing. One one extra water breathing and one extra climbing, so that should come out to about twenty two hundred. Oof. All right. You you lay down some gentrum bucks and you get a bunch of uh, potions. If you care to inspect the labels, the new ones, much like the old ones, all have a three day expiration timer. Well, if we hit three days and I'm just chugging. <laughs> I guess right. I guess I'm gonna be really fucking good at climbing then, huh? <laughs> Five in a row. Woo! You're like fighting like some kobolds. Well, come on, man, spit some acid on me. <laughs> He's fucking spy. He's just fucking Spider Manning. Like it, it, a, a monster comes out. He's just immediately climbing it. What you know about this? I climb it. Yeah, I climb in its mouth and then just bathe in its stomach acid. Did he? Did he just climb up its asshole? <laughs> <laughs> he said he was going round the back. I, I thought he was gonna flank it. I guess he kind of is. <laughs> he flanked it, all right. Yeah, the ultimate flanking. Can't dodge from the inside, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab uh, another. I already have some water. I'm going to grab another one. Um, so that's 50, 200. Um, I'm going to grab another three healing potion, or another three healing potions to bring me to seven total. So that's 350. Um, and then uh, how much is it for the for the um, dark vision? 500. Uh, okay, so I'm going to grab two of those. I'm actually going to ignore the resistance ones because when he's raging, he's immune to almost everything except psychic damage. Uh, also, very important to note, you are definitely not immune. You are resistant. <laughs> no, resi no, 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 resistant, but like, okay, so if he takes a potion of resistance to something, does that give him resistance on top of his raging resistance? No, uh, it would not immediately stack up, but it would mean you would have resistance outside of a rage. Uh, it's true. Okay, so I'll grab two potions of acid resistance. Um, All right. Attack on another thou. As I say, does any corporation truly want you to be, like, you know, immune to, like, psychic assault? Uh, <laughs> God, no. These potions suck. He takes a potion of psychic resistance, then goes, hang on, I don't need any of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is all fake. <laughs> We're in the Matrix. Oh, shit. I'm down to about I'm down to about four thousand. I've got I've got a total for just a review for you guys since y'all need me alive to to do things. Um, I've got seven potions of cure wounds, two of water breathing, two of workers vigor, two potions of climbing, two of dark vision, and two potions of acid resistance. Do you guys think I should get some more of any of those? Well, I bought ten healing potions, and most of them are for you and Klaus. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Cool. No, you, 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 because we need you, Klaus, because he's just gonna 
end up using them anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm figuring that I'm figuring I'm going to be tanking or damage, damage soaking and damage dealing. So I just used eight of the ones I bought. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and giving you healing potions makes me feel less bad about setting you on fire all the time. I'm just picturing Klaus just like chugging them, like just pounding them one after the other. I'm going to set my bladder to full. <laughs> yes, that is very fair. You should keep one of those. Uh, you, you just drank enough. You can probably piss. Whatever you piss next is probably a healing potion. Yeah, that's true. And it's <laughs> sterile, too. Can I try that? Or... <laughs> What, what do you want to piss no. on? It's better than a healing potion. <laughs> no, you can definitely piss on a bottle and save it to heal yourself later. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm not going to stay yeah, sterile for a, long. That's a grand idea. Uh, Klaus, do you want to buy any more healing potions before Fandango shuts this one down? Yes. <laughs> Fandango's going to buy two potions of acid resistance, too. So Weak-ass healing potions. <laughs> that's only 50 Fucking gold. Uh, um, I'll just... <laughs> Buy ten Klaus more. Just like God, I remember when one healing potion would get me healed. Now I gotta fucking go through a case to get a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm taking off five hundred more ginger gnome bucks. It's sensible. <laughs> just like shoveling potions into your. Bag. Oh, you're all gonna be rattling as you want. Fuck that noise. We got we got bags of holding, baby. Oh, I, I know. There's a reason I'm not actually making you keep up with that. I, I would just say, I want to see what happens when uh, when one of us gets tripped. <laughs> clatter, clatter, thud, smash, shatter. A lot of healing. <laughs> we feel much better. <laughs> what happens when you trip? A lot of healing. An explosion of healing. I bathed my healing puddle. I licked all the floor right. a lot. We will cycle back to Fandingo at the top of the order. All right. You guys done with this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go buy any random other shit we need. Go to baseline gear. <laughs> well, you don't need me to light up the other things, do they? Uh, yeah. The they only these things only respond to uh, the keys. Uh, speaking of keys, well, you have the only key. Uh, I have a well. It says Ginger Nomi key. That might have been a typo on my part, or I don't know. But um, does my key do anything with these? Yours is not. Yours is very different than um, what uh, the one Fandingo is holding. Fandingo is sort of more, it's it's processed. It's got sort of the same look as most of the Gentronome stuff. Um, the one you're holding is a little more custom. It's got a sleekness to it. It's got a balance. Like, what you're holding is special. Um, what Fandingo is holding is the, there's clearly a key-based system that his is tapping into. I uh, look down my nose at Fandingo's key. I turn off the I turn off the kiosk that gives you healing potions. Good. <laughs> I'm just bleeding ginger gnome bucks right now. <laughs> uh, Fandango's going to go over to the one that makes components and ship and scroll okay. through the menu to see if it lists holy symbols or priest gear or anything like that. Uh, no, to be frank, that would be over in the uh, gear section. Okay, well then. I guess I'll go look at the gear, because nobody else can really do anything until I turn the machine on. <laughs> yep, much like Gentronome's uh, capitalist empire, it is not a fair system. <laughs> so in the gear section, does it have holy symbols of multiple deities? Um, it has one holy symbol. Uh, the holy symbol to Gentrilio, the god of Gentronome. I buy Gentri one. Gentrilio. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, can I roll a can I roll a religion check to see if I know anything about Gentrilio? I mean, uh, yeah, if there's a check for it, go for it. There he is. It's untrained, so. Oh yeah, you can always roll. You might have heard of it. Let's see. Uh, that is a that is a nineteen. Wow. <laughs> you, you know that the Gentrilio logo is extremely marketable, and uh, <laughs> you can buy Gentronome-based merchandise. At T Public today. <laughs> <laughs> Bjorg just basically recites a 30 second advert for Gentronome products. <laughs> uh, you know, with a 19, yeah, wow, those are, those are good. You, by pure happenstance, uh, encountered uh, some merchants or a merchant caravan, and with them was uh, some people who talked about Gentrilio, which is a it's a very specific, very kind of like regional god they don't know a lot about. Um, they know the, the people who worship him are very devoted. 
um, and they know that uh, Drentrilio is a, a commerce god, um, a god of fortune, um, definitely someone with merchants would, of course, have a cursory awareness of. Okay. Um, you don't, again, because it's sort of very specific and very you know, limited, and you're, you're sort of seeing now what is sort of Gentrilio's worshippers in his own way, um, you didn't have a ton of information, but you don't... He's not an evil god. He's not a good god, especially. Um, he, he's more just sort of profit-driven, just uh, just trying to, to build a better mousetrap, except by mousetrap, a uh, money-stealing device. You, you know that wherever they put up a Gentrilio temple... The rent soon becomes unaffordable and it loses all its character. Oh, amazingly so, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but you can get a good coffee anywhere near a Gentrilio temple. Anywhere near. Bjork is gonna, like, <laughs> lean back as he thinks about it. He goes, I think I recognize that god. I think, I think, I believe he's the god of gentrification. Don't worry, you I... won't recognize it for long. Fandingo also buys a diplomat's pack, a hundred, two fifty foot hanks of silk rope, and. Seven rations. Rock on. <laughs> it's, very, it's very specific. And it sounds like a party. <laughs> well, I'm going to now sit down right at the base of the little kiosk so the kiosk stays turned on, open up my diplomat's pack, pull out a bottle of ink and an ink pen, and on the flip over the holy symbol of Gentrilio and start sketching the holy symbol of Torag onto the back of it. <laughs> and I'm going to troll the fuck out of Silas. Just some basic blasphemy. I am going to need... I'll be generous. Sleight of hand. I'll let you do this with sleight of hand. Um, and also that's going to take you a few turns to do. Yeah. So uh, while he is working on that, does anybody need anything from the basic gear station? <laughs> um, yes. it's gonna be. I'm looking up stuff. So I should probably buy some rations. Yeah, Fendingo rolls a five on a sleight of hand, so it might uh, be the shittiest symbol of Torag. Why, why, why are you covered a dick on all that? Uh, it, it basically sort of looks as if someone who once saw a holy symbol, not a holy symbol of Torag, just a holy symbol, uh, got into a, a horrible, horrible accident and, and temporarily lost their sight, and smeared feces across the front of it. Hey, no, nah, you didn't natural one. It just looks shitty. Uh, it's just not very recognizable to Torag. It, it, it's not going to fool anybody. It is bad. You can buy another one if you want to try again. It's just ink. I could write, I could wipe it off. I suppose <laughs> if you think that he'll buy a stained version. Oh, I don't want to sell it to him. I just want to wear a holy symbol of Torag around my neck to troll Silas. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> I'm just being an asshole. Yeah, maybe the shitty one right. is more trolly. Anyway, Brandon Thymaster, what uh, adventuring gear can I tempt you with? Uh, I think he'd have I've got my rations. Still got my rope. So that's all a man needs mm. to have an adventure. Bear's mentioning that if uh, Fandingo is painting with both hands, he has set the key down. You are free to pick it up and go use the booth of your choosing. <laughs> No, I'm still uh, living that ascetic life. <laughs> if you ignore all the, you know, gem-studded shorts and huge gold medallions and sunglasses. Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm good. The the model of humility and, and no ego. Yeah. <laughs> Klaus. I'm buying ten <laughs> rations and I'll, I'll still look at stuff while uh, other people are going. Buying rations? I'm not shocked. Silas. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's call up the list of adventuring gear. So I'll get some. I'll get a week's worth of rations. I will get a new rope. I thought you were about to say a week's worth of rope. And <laughs> boy, I was going to have some follow-up questions. <laughs> a grappling hook. Let's see here. A bag of ball bearings. <laughs> Chalk. I've never had somebody have a bag of ball bearings in a game and well, whatever they tried do. to do work out. <laughs> You should let me finish. <laughs> That's exactly why I bought a bag of ball bearings earlier and why I bought five bags of 20 cal caltrops. The first time we went through here, I was like, fuck it, a th one caltrop for every 10 ball bearings? This ought to be hilarious. It'd be uh, useful if you ever get left home alone. <laughs> Just a fully grown bard, like, booby trap in his house. 
You can cast magic at these people. Yeah, that's a whole thing. That's not funny. I mean, yeah, I can kill them at any time. This is for me, all right? This is this is for daddy. <laughs> I work hard. I deserve a little fun. All right, Silas has done his uh, base gear shopping. Bjorg, anything from the core essentials line we can interest you in? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, no, I actually don't have rope listed. Okay. So let's buy... In your defense, you might have had rope. Oh, no, Klaus tried to loot rope from you, but you did not have any. Yes, uh, I am I am going to get 50 feet of silk rope. Um, so that's 10 more off. If it's comfort to you, if you had had rope, it would have been stolen from you already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's that's very comforting. 50 feet of silk rope. Um, out of character, like out of character question. Are we tracking ammunition for ranged weapons at all? Because like, kind of seems like we haven't been. I mean, I've just sort of been trusting you guys. Okay. Well, a couple of, a couple of sessions ago, Drew said he'd sell us returning ammunition oh, yeah. for like yeah. two or like a couple thousand gold or something. That's right. Yeah. We did a, they just paid up front. They paid a bunch for returning ones so that we don't have to fucking keep track. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, Bjorg wasn't there, so. I have 10 returning crossbow bolts. I'll just, I can give Bjork half of them if okay, they're cool. not in this, if they're not in one of these kiosks. Yeah, to be fair, they are not available in this kiosk. You'll got them somewhere else. Okay. So I'll just give Bjork half of mine. Okay, so five returning crossbow bolts. Yep. And uh, neither of you can fire more than that per round right now. Neither yeah, of you can fire that per round right now, so you're fine. Uh, Bjorg is going to buy um, an Explorer's Pack and a Dungeoneer's Pack. Not a bad idea with the packs. A little variety, yep. little baseline. We got you there. Yeah. All right. Fendingo, you were holding a, a, a very shittily painted back of the Gentrilio symbol. You monster. Yeah, but it's better than any uh, praise to Torag that Silas can utter, so I'm going to put it around my neck. All right, guys, we That's done okay. here? That's it's, okay. It's, it's good to have a target. Uh, when you look at it in just the right way, it sort of looks like a butthole. Oh, so it's perfect representation. All right. <laughs> I mean, it in no way looks like a symbol of Torag, but it does kind of look like a butthole. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Fandingo, what would you like to go do next? Well, we've rested. Um, you guys, uh, yeah, you did a long rest right before you came here. So do we want to, do you guys want to buy anything from any of these other stands, or are we ready to boogie out of here? Let's get moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ready to roll. All right. Out of game. I have no idea where we're supposed to go next. I don't remember which one of these three things at the top of the... Okay, so you needed two, or you needed one gemstone to get through here, two gemstones to get through here, Three gemstones to get through here. All right. One square yard of silk or one cow. That's a well, you know. that's a listed item here. <laughs> <laughs> one pound of saffron Goodness. or one ox. So we've gone through the one and two gemstone doors. So correct. We should go to through the three gemstone door. The door on the upper right-hand side of the screen to the far northeast for our folks who are just listening to this. Yes, the three gemstone door, which you go up to, you hold your key, it lights up, blah, blah, blah. You're all fairly familiar with this process. It opens, it uh, leads into a hallway, but the minute that door opens, you immediately just like smell like, oh, this... It's not noxious to the point of requiring checks, but it is just clearly... Not a good scent, not a smell that something has gone right in here. It's kind of got a chemically uh, burn to it. God damn it, Klaus. It's not always me. When is it not you? It reminds me of sleeping in my own filth as a child. Fair enough. God damn it, Silas. Um, hey, you know what else comes in a diplomat's pack? A vial of perfume. I was about to guess a perfume. Or a cologne. Is, is Fandigo just like spraying it around like Lysol? Ah, I'm just gonna douse the, I'm gonna douse a piece of cloth and hold it over my nose and go down the hall. He's spraying like a 15 year old going on a date. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, you all go down the hall. It kind of weaves and bobs, of course, as they all have, and then you come to a door. 
Um, this one is is very tightly kind of kind of sealed, and as you uh, press on it, like you can open it, but you can feel like it's trying to stay back. It's gonna close immediately. Like it it, it is trying to keep this room sealed. Does the funk seem uh, thicker at this end of the hall? As soon as you open the door, um, it, it's it's just sort of a, a light fog kind of hits you, and you can all roll perception checks. Fandango rolls a 21 for perception. Silas rolls a 3. Brandon Firemaster rolls a natural 20 for perception. Klaus rolls another 11. Uh, Bjorg rolls a 20 for perception. Man, really, really highs and lows, and then one right in the middle. Okay, so as so you all kind of step into the new area, you can see... All right, uh, Silas, the the sting of the, the, the crap, this fog, like it gets in your eye and you just, you you blink and you water up and you can't see anything this round. Um, you're just, you're kind of tearing up. You, you just, you get in, you don't natural one. That's that's the basic limit of your vision. Uh, Klaus, yeah. you can see that this is a room. It is filled with a thin green kind of mist that, gets real thick uh, toward the western, slightly northern side. Uh, the other thing you can notice is that, wow, this room is fucked up. Like, there, there's, like, broken shit everywhere. There's scorch marks. Um, yeah, yeah, this place looks really fucked up. Bjorg and Fandingo, and, of course, Brandon is also getting all of this. You all see everything that has come so far. And you can also sort of make out a little bit more of the rubble. Like, you can kind of tell, like, this probably thing to the northeastern side used to be maybe some sort of a station. Like, you can see bits of glass and, and whatnot. Uh, maybe some sort of, like, lab area. Uh, the, the far back, you can't really tell what it was. There's a lot of stone. Uh, it almost looks like there's like some arms or hands broken up in there. So it's Ooh. all kinds of fucked up. Like, yeah, mechani like me mechanical arms and hands or like, like stone, like oh, stone gotcha. hands or stone arms, like like statue. OK. And you can also kind of note that over here, uh, there's definitely a shape of something in the dense part of the mist. But you really can't make out because it's so thick over there. Uh, but Brandon Thymaster, you with your natural 20. Uh, can make out that over there, there appears to be some sort of contraption um, that is pumping and a lot of mist is spewing forth. So that might be the source of this. And uh, as you all step inside, you also feel a slight burn uh, begin to run across your skin. Standing in this room will render one point of acid damage to everyone per per round. All right, Bjorg's down on that potion of acid resistance. <laughs> how, how long does those potions last? They will last for one minute. Okay, so how the potions of acid resistance work. Um, normally, resistance just means you have your damage. For this room specific purposes, I'm going to say that the standing one damage you take in the weaker areas of the fog is negated if you have the acid resistance. All right. Otherwise, they work standard as resistance down to a minimum of one damage. So, uh, we are actually... but And actually, yeah, I'll let you all, kind of as a reaction, if you have an acid resistance potion and you want to chug it, you can go ahead and kick that back before we go into initiative order. All right, yeah. That sounds like it's a smart idea. Yeah. It's one damage per turn? Per turn. I'll hold off for a few minutes. Okay. Klaus? I didn't mind it. Okay. <laughs> Fandango, it is your turn. You take one damage. Ow. Um, hey, Brandon, do you still have that uh, stick that makes a shitload of wind? I'm way ahead of you. I'm <laughs> already holding that hurricane staff. This is well, going to be great. <clears throat> why don't we have somebody hold the door open and you can blow the shit out the door? Oh, I was just going to make some kind of acid hurricane, but yeah, I guess your <laughs> idea makes more sense. Sorry to fuck with your plan, bro. Um, yeah, Fendingo's going to... I'm just going to move forward and look around as closely as I can. Roll me another perception. <laughs> Nine. 
Uh, you don't really get any new details you didn't get with your 21 earlier. I noticed that the room smells bad. You notice your skin hurts. Yeah. Brandon Thymaster, you chugged an acid potion? Yep. Who else chugged a potion? I think uh, everybody but me and Klaus. So, ba- so basically all the, like, fighters wussed out and chugged potions and let you guys pretty much just dissolve. <laughs> how many... So it's how many turns in a minute? Ten. Six seconds in a round, so ten rounds in a minute. All right. All right, Brandon Thymaster, we are starting. You, the This is your first one, so that's why you're set at nine. Okay. My thinking is we should probably smash the uh, poison fog machine. I am going to, just because I have a hurricane staff, I am going to move forward and see if I can disperse the acid fog around uh, where it's thickest. I'm going to assume there's ventilation in this room, otherwise uh, we'd all be suffocating if it's hermetically sealed. So I'm hoping that with an application of applied hurricane, I can uh, maybe clear some of this stuff out. I mean, that's my that's my reasoning, but I really just want to see what happens if I hit this acid fog with hurricane. <laughs> That is the, okay. the the true root source of most decisions in this game. Yeah, that that feel, uh, we're making a lot of pretense to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, your hurricane staff. What does that? What magical spell does that replicate? Gust of wind. Line of strong wind, sixty feet wide, ten feet. Blast in any direction. Disperses vapor. Okay. Um, what? I guess use a little arrow thing and draw me the line in which you're blasting it. Got to be firing towards where we saw the uh, the contraption that is spewing this acid fog. Okay. Or, or acid mist, I suppose. You fire your blast of wind, and it uh, strikes through the dark uh, section of fog that is much stronger, uh, dispersing it, as the spell says, sort of sending it bursting and swirling and rolling all through the room, uh, meaning that everyone is going to be taking acid cloud damage. (laughs) (laughs) But look at that. I only rolled three. You gave me a hurricane, Steph. You gave me a cloud of acid. What? This was just inevitable. I can't be held responsible for this. So anyone with acid resistance is going to take one damage. Everybody else takes the full three. So he just blasted it towards us? He just blasted it, and it just hit the room, and it rolled around, because you're in... Remember how I said the door tried to snap shut as uh, you were coming in? The door auto-seals as you're coming through. It's not like... It's almost like somebody said, why don't we have somebody hold the door open? Nah, fuck it. Let's all bathe in acid. Bjorg, uh, Bjorg is now on some existential... Yeah, Bjorg, Bjorg is not consciously aware of his hit point count, because that's not how it works, but on some existential level, he realizes that by being reduced to 63, he is now one further down from... further away from 69, and that makes him sad. <laughs> we, do, we do have to go back through that corridor, Fendinger. <laughs> you do still have the staff. Um, I will, however, say one other thing. When... Brandon does that, it does disperse enough of the fog to get a clear view, so I think everybody who wants to can go ahead and give me fresh perceptions to see um, in the heart of that cloud that was blocked before. That cloud rolls a 20. (laughs) Fendigo rolls a 22. George rolls an 18. Silas gets a 16. Brandon Flymaster rolls a 19. Wow, y'all did really good. We are all paying attention. So everybody can see that it appears to be this sort of rigged up uh, system that is pulling from these uh, two distinct. You can just sort of see that there are pits in the ground. Um, You're not sure what's in them, but there's, you know, obviously like piping and machinery running between um, the contraption and and the pits. Uh, And then the device itself um, is... Mechanical, high, high tech, fancy gentronome bull crap. Um, let's see, that's all that everybody gets. But um, Fandingo and Klaus can notice both that there is a scorch mark uh, in the in the fog on the ground, 
and that the contraption that is spitting all this out is already busted up and broken. Oh, bummer. There goes my plan. Well, it's lucky you huh. didn't charge in blindly to break that thing, <laughs> which uh, I, was, I was inevitably going to do. <laughs> Klaus, it is your turn. All right, well, all right, now the fog is coming out of the two pits. Uh, you don't know. Oh. Can I hit you the get, pits? You guys have not gotten nearly a clear enough picture. There's a device in the middle, and it, that, it, uh, that area does seem to be the source of it. Um, but you definitely can't pinpoint it yet. And now that he's dispersed all the fog, is everything even? Or He has in no way dispersed oh. all the fog. He has sent it swirling around you. So what, I, what I'm um, asking, though, is, that is, is the thick part of the fog still thicker than the rest of the room? Yes, okay. um, he did. He did a blast. It swirled around you. You all took damage, and then it resettled. Okay, it's um, thick. Then, Brandon, let me know what you find out. I'm gonna go search that garbage pile up ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Um, so I can, I can run. Klaus, right? Klaus has a move, and he sticks with it. <laughs> I'll just use both my moves. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm making a beeline to the northern garbage pile. Makes sense. All right, Silas. Oh, is it possible for me to launch a flaming arrow into one of those pits? Oh, no. You're going to be shooting with disadvantage and a fairly difficult AC because you only got a brief look at them and their positioning. And again, it's kind of covered by the thick fog, so... You, you can have a perception check, and if you do really well, we might take away the disadvantage, but it's still going to be a pretty decent AC to hit, um, just because that's not an easy shot. All right, well, let's uh, let's fail a perception check first. Twelve. Yeah, it's not enough to get rid of the disadvantage. Fuck it, I'm going to try shooting anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, how are you lighting an arrow on fire? Are you just wrapping a cloth around it? or Yeah, I have, like, tinder and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you you bought you all bought tons of shit. Finally, rip off a part of my cloak there, and uh, let one fly. All right, just for for basic sanity, roll me a dexterity check to make sure you properly. I mean, you are lighting something on fire. Yeah. All right, you don't drop it on yourself or anything. That's good. <laughs> all right, so with disadvantage, it's a nineteen. That uh, you hear, you see the arrow go into the fog. You sure showed that fog a lesson. And you hear a clatter. <laughs> All right. Well, at least I learned that the fog is apparently not explosive. You're. <laughs> it's a good thing because remember, you are all in the fog. You're just in a weaker version. You're of welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Bjorg. All right, uh, Klaus. We knocked one off your character for acid damage for your turn, since I forgot you don't have acid immunity. Bjorg, you do have acid immunity, so you take no damage. Okay, uh, so there's other scorch mark on the on the uh, eastern side of things. How well can I see it from where I am? Fairly well. Okay, like, does it look like there's anything, like, more in it, or is it just, like, a scorch mark on the floor? It's not a pit or anything? Not that you can tell from your current position. I can actually get all the way up to that uh, lab pile if I use both of my moves. Oh, yeah, barbarian speed. Yeah, so he's he's just going to move the full 80 feet and go basically right up to the lab pile. The the thing that looks like it was the wreckage of the lab, just to get like a better look at it. Vendingo, can I see the contraption thingy? Mm, you can roll a perception check. Okay, I just since I knew where it was, I didn't know if I could still see it. No, um, again, the, the fog there is extremely dense. 13 does not get you. You know the general area, so you can sort of like make out general stuff um but that is where the fog is super dense so from outside of it if you were closer it would be more doable from where you are no 13 not enough all right i'm gonna down a potion of acid resistance all righty uh go ahead and do take your one damage for starting without it though yep okay but you are acided up and can i still move yeah the pounding a potion is an action so you so still, I've still got movement. my full move okay you got it, buddy. Yeah, I'm going to go 30 feet over towards the... 30 feet closer to the edge where we saw the pools and crap. Okay, dokie. Brandon Thymaster. Uh, Brandon got a pretty good look at where the contraption was. So he's got no trusty vaguely remembers where that is. Burn both his move actions 
to move in front of the contraption. Okay, uh, you take one damage from the acid cloud, and that is after your damage reduction. Okay, I did anticipate that might happen. <laughs> uh, you said you burned both moves? Uh, yeah, it was uh, 45 to get there, so... All right, then that is you are round, and Klaus. All right, I'm going to keep moving towards the garbage pile. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can get right in there, and uh, I guess I'll make a perception check. Nope. nope. Investigation. Okay, I'll do that. Perceptions when you're kind of like looking right. around, scouting for something, digging through is investigation. Well, yeah, I haven't actually touched the pile yet. So. Oh, you want to just look at it. Well, I mean, yeah, you because know, if I move one space more, then I'll uh, that'll be into my second move. Yeah, but you're at the edge, like you've got All reach. Right. You, can, hey. you can put your hands in. All right. Ooh, natural twenty. Oh man, that is a good one. Okay, you you kind of dig around, you find uh, a few more like weird statue pieces, and then you find some strange mechanical object. Um, you don't know what it is, but it looks pretty cool. And, like, awesome. it might might be of some use or interest or something. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I do know that you said the, the device I saw that Brandon's checking out is mechanical, correct? Yes. Like everything else in this entire dungeon, it is mechanical. Oh, right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Guys, I found a mechanical object, and it's awesome. <laughs> Mm. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Silas. Okay. Oh, Klaus, you take a damage. Sorry, I keep forgetting that. Oh, yeah. I'll do that. I'll move, uh, you know, double move this to about here, you know, just to see what's going on. Okay. Uh, oh, this time the fog does six, but you have a potion, so you take three. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bjorg. Okay, so I'm now standing basically right up against the uh, trash lab pile. Where I, where I need to roll, like, perceptioners or whatever. Uh, if you would like to begin searching through it, that would be an investigation. All right, let's do investigation then. Um, See if you can match Klaus's. Uh, Bjorg gets a 19. So. Okay, um, also good. Not natural 20, but good. Uh, you begin to search through. You find Char... Actually, roll me a dexterity check. All right. Uh, Welcome to my world, Bjork. All right, Bjork rolls a 10 on that dexterity. Um, okay, you are going to take four damage um, okay. from glass shards uh, ow, and, and various ow. like little dribbles of potion and effect, because, again, this was like a lab set. If you're kind of digging through a chemical spell. Um, so you kind of go through... You will find one intact vial of green potion. Uh, it is mm. not labeled. You do not know what it does. <laughs> I found a mysterious liquid. Bjork holds up a, a vial. Drink it. That it's a callback. <laughs> 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 All the way back. Drink it. I bet it'll do something awesome to you. No, no. The last time I took an unexpected surprise potion, I ended up much smaller. Oh, that is, that is, that's way back in the Good day. Good times. Uh, and honestly, oh, I didn't man. even take that. Silas did it to me. All right. Oh. Well, with everybody uh, spread through the room, surrounding themselves in various layers of poisonous fog, I think that is the perfect time to leave them be for this week <laughs> and see how they will fare for two weeks holding their breath. But fear not! Listeners, for as you know, we are not done with the episode yet. This is the part where we take your questions, both on our Patreon Discord and on our Facebook Live blog, facebook.com slash authors and dragons. But of course, we do the Discord first because they're the fancier ones. They jump the line, you see. <laughs> so, Rick, why don't you uh, take it away? All right. Well, our friend uh, Alex starts us off with a, uh, a timely, uh, timely Valentine's Day question. If your A and D character could date a character from your own books, who would it be and why? I feel like Gunther and Amy from the Fred series would get along really well. Amy's a drug dealing mage. <laughs> I think Brandon Fymaster and Brandon Fymaster from the Totally Legend of Brandon Fymaster. <laughs> <laughs> probably all right. 
I think Fandango would strike out with every female character I've ever written. But he would try his damnedest. I think only Denise would be interested in Klaus. But I don't think Klaus would be interested in her. That's oh, sad. Man, I, I, uh... You know, I'm gonna take this back all the way to back to Mongolia. There's a there's a shield maiden named Nika in Catabasis that I think uh, Bjorg would get along with great. She's a, she is a, you know, violent Russian lady. So I think I think they'd get on good. Does seem like Bjorg's type. Yeah, it's hard to. It's actually it's kind of weird because it's actually it's very hard for me to conceive of him in a romantic way in my head. And yet all the ladies love him. Yeah. I think I think Silas would get would uh, would probably wind up dating Sister Bernadette, who's this old, cranky, miserable, fire and brimstone Templar in, uh, in my Toma Bill books. And together they could just like, you know, they could just pray, hunt evil and just like, you know, and just be bitter at life. <laughs> be hated by everyone. Just like punish him. I think I honestly don't think Silas could be happy in a relationship unless the person was just being abjectly horrible to him. Well. She would pretty much be that person. Silas should date a reality star. <laughs> Silas and the Kardashians. Silas is getting God. yelled at by a woman in the middle of a Macy's for 15 minutes straight. It Thank ends. He looks up. Thank you, Tori. <laughs> There's no way Silas and the Kardashians that he wouldn't in about five minutes just to come to the conclusion that, okay, these are all demons and they have to die. <laughs> I also love that I made it clear I'm definitely not talking about any of the fancy ones when I said a Macy's. <laughs> All right, before we move on, um, like while Drew was away, I just wanted to see how this note thing works, so I wrote Drew sucks cocks on the map. Uh, how do I undo that? <laughs> you don't there ever. forever. Uh, have it. Oh, shucks. Sorry, Drew. <laughs> that is the that is the live blog. That is now the last live blog line for the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should actually fix that. Oh. I forgot. We, people can actually see this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, Rick, do we have any? Jen asks the simplest question of all. What's your favorite color? Purple. Purple. Gray is my favorite color. I felt so symbolic yesterday. Uh, I'm going to say like a kind of like a, a deep, a really deep like emerald green. I tend to favor a nice bright blue. Yeah. I'd probably go with uh, a, dar a dark purple or black. Purple, but more metal. All right, then. We didn't right. make much comedy yep. out of that. Uh, Joe, <laughs> let's go to Thanks, Facebook. Thanks, Jen. All right, let's see here. God, you're supposed to say something weird and bizarre and horrifying. Uh, hold on a second. God, we should. We're normal people. Hurry, hurry, vamp. All right, so uh, our friend John asks, I recently had a discussion about what halfling tastes like. What the fuck is wrong with you, John? In the spirit of Gendronome, what do you suppose gnome tastes like, and what would you serve it with? Well, in my opinion, I would think gnome kind of tastes like oil and industry. That's I Gentronome. Think, oh. Mm. I think it would taste like it would, it would taste like something everybody pretends to like because it's rare and expensive, and you'd serve it with something pretentious. I think it would taste like short pig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go maybe like a like a veal-y venison. Uh, you know, you don't get like a or just like a yeah, like a young baby cow. You know, really terrible and guilty. Like I shouldn't be eating this. Also, speaking of cannibalism and halflings, fun story. I had a halfling in a uh, game who was a gourmand, uh, and so he would eat everything they killed, uh, and that includes like if they would kill elves or humans <laughs> and whatnot. And they would be like, you can't fucking do that. That's cannibalism. And he'd be like, no, it's not. They're not halflings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm playing a, uh, I'm actually playing an Oath of the Ancients paladin in a, uh, in a play that post game. And his, like, there's another, there's another wizard in the party whose whole shtick is that he's, uh, he is comprising the, he's compo creating the ultimate monster encyclopedia. Um, and so the two of them hang out and the, the, this uh, Oath of the Ancients Paladin is kind of like a redneck. He's just like this very working class half elf. And he's like, yeah, but how do you cook it? Like, can you cook it? You, you got to know if you can cook it or not. What the fuck use is that thing if you, if you don't know if you can eat it? Hey, it uh, looks like we missed one on the Discord that I am going to uh, throw the fact that I have the loudest voice in and uh, slam it in because this really appeals to me. And I know John Hartness, those old school wrestling fans. So we've done what theme songs slash, you know, walkout songs would we have for our characters. But we had someone on the Discord ask, what would we have for ourselves? Like, they're announcing you, John Hartness, the author, and you're about to walk out. What do you want playing? 
<sighs> there are just so many. I've got one. It's super on brand for me. Most people are not going to know it. Um, there's a song called Do Something Crazy. And if you have watched the opening credits to Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates, uh, you have heard it. And that would be a pretty appropriate and, and good energetic pump the crowd up song before I was going to walk out. I'd be down with that one. Mine would either be ACDC's Back in Black or Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy from Big and Rich. <laughs> Mine would be a toss up between uh, Berserker by Fella Track <laughs> or Magic Bird of Fire by the Sal Sol Orchestra. You can look that one up, kids. But we don't have to, do we? Yes, it's homework. I demand you look that one up before the next episode. Every single listener. Uh, okay, so I got I got two that I could that I could that I would like. Uh, one is I like it heavy by Hailstorm because there's nothing there's nothing like walking out to the line Hallelujah, motherfucker, <laughs> take me to church. Um, and uh, come with me now by the Congos. Uh, I guess I'm just going to go with the music that was playing while uh, Pee Wee Herman was making his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'd, I'd probably go with something angry like Right Now by Corn. <laughs> I love that somehow Bevan is the most on brand out of all of us. <laughs> but really, for all of us, it should just be the fucking Benny Hill theme song. Yeah, it's yakety sax blasting. L- loser by Beck. <laughs> I don't know if any of us move fast enough to justify the Benny Hill theme song. I mean, I, well, that's why you speed it up. <laughs> yeah, they speed up later, Joe. They didn't really move that fast. It's the no. magic of editing. I'm standing by it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so our friend Jeff says, is there a creative endeavor that you are not as good at that you uh, not as good at that you wish you were? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, you know, so, you know something? <laughs> yeah. I, I I love John Luther Davis, but let me tell you, if that whole thing of like, you know, with this, like that whole like, you know, trope with cannibalisms of like, you know, you eat your enemy and gain their power was true, I'd be hunting him down. <laughs> I, because, no, no offense, no offense, John, I, I, I love you, but goddamn, I have always wanted to draw and I can see the pictures in my head, but my hands are too stupid to make them happen. Well, you know, they say eating... Someone is the sincerest form of flattery. <laughs> I don't think they say that. Sincerest don't think form they say of that. cutlery. Cutlery. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, I, like, I'm going to say art as well. I wish. I don't know. I guess I just. I wish I had devoted more time to it. I, 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 still, I still could. It's just hard. Um, but actually, something that I really wish I could do uh, better and that I want to learn to do better is like woodworking. I would really love to learn how to do some good woodworking. Yeah, I just think carpentry is really, really cool and really beautiful, and it's a skill that I wish I had. I just wish I had any musical talent ever. I wish I could read music, actually, because it's, it's funny. I can sing. I've been in a lot of musical theater, and a, I actually can't read music. You know, my wife could probably teach you. I'm, I'm the flip. I'm the inverse of Joe. Uh, I can read music because I used to play musical instruments, but I wish I could sing. And that one is just mm. sort of a pipe dream for me because I am super fucking tone deaf, as is most of my family. But it's like, yeah, that, that seems like a thing that would be nice to be able to do. I guess maybe I wished that I could sing well enough that it wasn't comically bad. Yeah, I'm, uh, my dad was a, a great singer, entertainer. He played keyboards and guitars. It would be very cool to do that, but I'd only kind of use it for pretty much the same purposes as charlie from always sunny in philadelphia <laughs> i just i probably wouldn't use it sincerely maybe just you know when you get those youtube videos of oh guy am- amazes people at train station by playing this soulful thing on a piano be that but i'd just be singing about dicks for 20 <laughs> minutes until they drag me away <laughs> i i i have always thought that the most magical creature on the internet is sexy sax man saxagram <laughs> Just going out in leather pants, playing a saxophone in public places with a mullet. I was gonna say, I'm, I'm I'm now envisioning like Steve on like a corner and like you know on in like Times Square, like you know singing, "We will, we will cock you." <laughs> <laughs> Since you mentioned it's always sunny in Philadelphia, so I'm actually I'm actually picturing him singing "Day Man." <laughs> 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 uh. 
I mean, Brandon Thymaster really is a master of karate and friendship for everyone. <laughs> yes, he's the original day, man. Yeah. Well, he's got a glowing sun right on his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to follow uh, Rick. I, uh, I kind of wish I had more artistic uh, ability and, and beyond that capacity for uh, graphic design. Yeah, things I, I think look good. Look yeah, right, right, right now, John Luther Davis is making notes. I can never be in a room alone with, with Rick and Bevan <laughs> <laughs> for, for multiple reasons. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, seriously, he had that note already. Especially if they're Talented hungry. artist mysteriously disappears after con meet. <laughs> the real danger is they trick you. You think you're in the room with one, but really they're both there. It's just every time you turn, they're just... <laughs> Shift in position. The other sneaking up behind you. Yeah, we're, we're like the A and D version of the Weeping Angels. <laughs> wait, wait! You were just over there. But no, no. A and D shirt, bald head, same guy. So, all right. Um, last question here. Uh, our friend uh, Jeanette, I'm assuming it's pronounced Jeanette, says, uh, "How has knowing and interacting with each other impacted your writing?" Well, I mean, we've gotten to work together on fun projects. That's one thing. It's made me insecure that I'm not as fast. <laughs> no, I'm I'm <laughs> me too. My, it's made me insecure that I'm not as funny. I don't know. It, it makes makes me like every time every time I read one of one of your guys' stuff, then like I'm just like, I'll see something that I'm just like, God damn, why couldn't I have thought of that? You know, first. So it it just makes me want to like you know be better. Yeah, uh, I I um, it has it has I haven't I haven't so I haven't thrown my hat into the self-publishing thing yet. I'm intending to, but being working with Yell has made me feel a lot more comfortable about the idea of that. It wasn't that I had a problem with it before. I was just really, really nervous about it. But now you have, like, <laughs> shining examples of if these fucking idiots can do it, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, the scariest thing about self-publishing is looking in from the outside and not knowing how to navigate it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's not just the yeah, artistically is something I can learn from each uh everybody's books individually they've all got sort of like really strong points that define their writing sort of approach but just being a guy who's still very much kind of on the in the shallow end of self-publishing just listening to uh these guys talk about the realities of the self-publishing business and uh it's very enlightening i think a lot of people if they were kind of like oh well maybe i can be a writer sat down and actually listened to the guys they're probably like oh man that is an actual <laughs> job. It, it, and I mean, it's true. Traditional publishing too, like all of this stuff, just like demystifying shit is hugely helpful in every respect. Mm. Oh yeah, it's it, it. It truly is just a labyrinth of mirrors sometimes, and so much of it is unnecessary. <laughs> but it it is okay. what it is. When when your whole industry is in upheaval, things are going to be shifting. I mean, the awesome thing, awesome thing is like you know, I'll I'll. I'll you know, we, 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 we joke about how, well, fucking stupid we are and watching us play the game. I'm sure that's pretty easy to, like, you know, see, too. But <laughs> the, reality, the reality is you, you guys are a group of a real bunch of, like, talented, talented writers. And, I mean, I've, I've, I've read a lot of, like, you know, you know self-pubbed books, probably, probably not as much as hor horrible ones as I'm sure John has seen. And then, but... Oh, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't finish Yeah, them. but, I mean, the thing, the, thing, the thing is, I mean, when you're in a group and you're reading stuff and you're, and you're like, looking at going... Yeah, they, these are some. These are the, these are not hard hard uh, bars to like. You know, uh, to hurdle is is completely different than when you're with, when you're in a group and you're reading and you're like reading their stuff and you're like, God damn, these guys are good. <laughs> you know, like there's a, there was a martial arts thing that I was taught years ago that that applies equally to the creative fields. Um, because honestly, like if I'm perfectly frank, martial arts is a creative field. It's 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 an active expression, but. Um, but uh, I uh, there's that there's that phase when you start out and you feel like you're surrounded by everyone else who's better than you and and it, it, it can it can gnaw away at your insecurities until you realize that being surrounded by people who are who are like either at your level or above your level is the best thing that can happen to you because you are you are in a circum you're in an environment where there is going to be constant learning. Yeah. It, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Having having a group of people around that are as good as me or better makes me better. Yeah, it's always a benefit. Going back to what you know, John said, you know, if these idiots can do it, 
but you know, not not quite that far. I, no, what I mean to say is that uh, you know, you, you, you tend to look at you know top tier successful writers and uh, you know, and and with, with a sense of awe. But uh, I'm, I, I hang around you guys, and yeah, uh, you, know, you are just straight up normal guys, and uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. For a writer, I'm <laughs> shit with words. What Bob is trying yeah. to say is we're not that all that impressive. <laughs> yeah. We're not the shining golden gods you assume us to be. <laughs> I would like to disagree. I am better than <laughs> I'm pretty sure they've already figured out exactly how impressive we are in person. Yeah, we, we, I was going to say, no, we, we're exceptional. It's not like we put you on a pedestal. He's naturally that tall. <laughs> I just stand there and then take my shirt off. No, they're standing yeah. on pedestals to be in the photograph with me, just to, like to stand high enough that we can even get in the same frame. Um, there is also, it's nice to have people to like bounce things in the industry off of because it is so mysterious and vague, even to us who have been in it for years. Like we might encounter a new aspect and be like, Hey guys, does this rate for this sound right to you? And that sounds like such a small thing, but you would not believe how many writers don't have the ability to go to others and ask that be like, Hey, does this, this feel right? Does this feel off? And just get a little bit of feedback from someone who, has insight who can actually say, ah, no, man, that, that feels wonky or yeah, no, man, that's just the standard. Yeah, that's huge. Just to, and especially since a bunch of us have different experiences in different arenas, like Drew's done a lot more with audio than a lot of us. And Joseph's been with more mainstream presses than some of us. And Rick and I are just old. <laughs> John knows cons like nobody. I'm a con man. What can I say? You are, and a publisher. You own a publishing company, which is probably more useful knowledge. But I feel like we lean on you for the con stuff the hardest. <laughs> um, but one of the things we've gotten to do as a creative endeavor together is the Shingle series, which you know we trade off month to month. Uh, last year we did all twelve, and Tantor was kind enough to give us a first volume of one through six. And guess what? Thanks to you insane junior adventuring motherfuckers, we have gotten enough positive review or sales or whatever mojo is necessary that, uh, believe it or not, we're getting shingles audio volume two, Woo-hoo! seven through 10 out on May 7th. Wait, seven through Se- seven through 12, <laughs> seven through 12. Yeah. Okay, so many numbers. Volume 7 through 12, coming out on May 7th, 2019. Volume 2. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, other, in other words, those of, you, those of you who didn't suffer enough through one case of shingles, now you can get a second case of shingles. You live in the anti-vax life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in the we, should, we should have renamed this, uh, this series Measles. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you thought it was dead. <laughs> oh, no, that's what we'll do. The reboot will be. Smallpox. I keep thinking of Shingle's ideas, and the problem is I keep, I keep like, I think that's a cool title and idea. Ah, oh, fuck. Why can't I just make it go? They're, they're hard. Like, no, like, hats off to you guys, because it's, it's writing, writing something straight up for comedy is, is outside my wheelhouse, and it's difficult. Oh, it doesn't always. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be straight up comedy. I mean, uh, slaughter, slaughter at Giggle Time Mountain. Uh, Drew, one of Drew's stories. That's actually a m- much more traditional horror story. Yeah, I was gonna say I really leaned more into horror than laughter on that one. And there's jokes in there, but it, it's it's meant to be a horror send up more than anything. Even if uh, like, what was the second one? Uh, Jerry's kids or Gary's children? No, Gary's, Gary's children. children. <laughs> if that hadn't involve you know a haunted fleshlight then uh that would have been straight up horror yeah yeah it's I horror agree. comedy you can lean more you can lean hard into either side if it's horror comedy you can lean hard into your haunted fleshlight <laughs> <laughs> just be prepared for the consequences and with that uh we will bid you adieu for this week from authors and dragons we will talk to you next week on side quest 
And we'll be back in two weeks to find out how everyone's faring in the acid fog. My bet is the musician does the best. (laughs) (laughs) Until next time. Bye. 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 Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Authors and Dragons! I'm going to set my bladder to full. <laughs> <laughs>